going on everybody? Uh, I'm here to give you another repair tutorial. This one is for the original Xbox. Um, just a quick note, uh, this tip will not work with the Xbox 360. Believe me, I've tried on many occasions and I can never get it to work. Um, what we're going to do here today is we're going to tackle the issue of the eject problems. And what that, what I mean by that is whenever you try to eject, uh, it either won't eject, it'll hesitate, or some. Uh, in most cases I've noticed you can simply tap the top of the Xbox and it will eject then, but eventually it'll get to where it just won't eject at all. Um, believe it or not, this is the most common thing I've ever come across on the original Xbox, as well as the simplest thing to fix. Um, I'd say out of the several hundred of these that I've uh, fixed over the years, about 75% have this issue. Um, another quick couple of things before we get started. Uh, this drive I've decided to use for this video is the Thompson. This is the first drive they put in the original Xbox. I've chosen this one because this is kind of the odd man out. Uh, all the rest of them are somewhat similar in how you take off the outer casings but this will work for any version, uh, it doesn't matter what type, as long as it is an original Xbox DVD drive. Um, I will try to cross-reference a little bit. Um, if there's some things I missed, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I love being able to help you guys get this stuff fixed up. Um, but I'll do my best for any issues I can think of, or any differences, I should say, in the other versions. Um, to, uh, to start off, you'll definitely need some sort of Phillips uh, head. I got lucky when I bought this tool and it came with a bit that's small enough for the itty bitty Phillips head screws, but typically uh, you're going to need one of the really small screwdrivers. And what I mean by that is some people call them jewelry screwdrivers, some call them electronic screwdrivers, uh, tomato tomato, just the very small ones so that you can get to those small screws. Uh, you'll also need a T10 Torx head. Um, some of them you won't. Uh, I know that there's one or two versions that don't have any of those type, um, but I know that this one does, and I believe at least one of the other ones also uses Torx. Um, so it just kind of depends on your version on that. Um, now for all the versions besides this one, I could be wrong, I could be making a mistake here, but I believe that uh, to take the outer shell off, all you have to do is unscrew four screws that are on the bottom. Um, like I said, there could be a little bit of difference, but it's somewhat universal, which is also why I chose this one, because this one is definitely not the same way. Um, I also think that some of them do have the screws back here, uh, but I can't remember offhand. Uh, so just just check it out before you do it, and just, you know, if you see a screw that's obviously holding on, then you'll need to take that off. Alright, now for this one, uh, the Thompson, there's two screws right where my, each of my pointer fingers are right now. Those are Phillips, and then there's the two torque screws up here on the back. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start taking these off. Um, and of course, if you have the other drive, just do what you need to do with that particular drive. Um, and, and again, if you have any differences that I failed to mention, uh, feel free to comment. I usually get back within a few hours on those comments. All right, now once you've got that part unscrewed, this simply just slides out. Uh, you will kind of want to pull it out, not just pull it up, because there's a lip that holds that in there. A way to keep track of the screws. I guess it might be possible to go without them if you lose them, but you know you're run, you're still running the risk of wear and tear on the drive. Now we're going to take out the two back screws, and these, like I said, these are the Torx screws. Also, one other thing I'd like to say is, if you're not sure how to get to this point uh, to get to the drive, uh, I do have another tutorial, and as you can see, the link 
is up now. Um, that tutorial is a full tutorial on how to take your Xbox apart. And so uh, if you need to do that first, go ahead and go watch that video uh, and then come back to this one. Alright, now that I've got those screws out, this pops out. Sometimes it's a little, you know, it's kind of a little bit stuck. You don't want to just rip it out of there. Um, but if you just wiggle it back and forth, kind of get this back off, it should uh, come out without too much issue. Okay, now the problem with this is the belt. Uh, the belts, I guess, are just really cheap. I guess it's something they decided to skimp on, uh, and that's why there's such an issue. Now, um, this, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody would have access to this same type. Um, what these are are just little rubber bands, and they're hair rubber bands. You can find them with, uh, you know, the hair clips and all that type of stuff. Uh, this really, this whole thing, uh, I'm pretty sure I paid like 99 cents or a dollar, you know, whatever for it. And there's a whole bunch. Uh, this one has several sizes in it. Um, but the one we'll need is the smaller one. Uh, you can use the medium sized one, but that one is not as long lasting. That one will go out on you. Uh, these little ones definitely last longer, and, uh, you know, they're definitely the one I prefer. Okay? Um, now, what we're going to do next is we've got to get the tray to come out um, because the motor and the uh, belt is all right about in this area. Now, here is another difference. Uh, I know most of them, of them are going to have this little white piece here that I'm uh, pointing at. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Um, but I know that one, if not a couple of the other versions, instead of having this white piece, will kind of have in the same general area a uh, black piece kind of underneath this area. And uh, it kind of protrudes out to the one side, and you can tell it's just kind of odd, and it's definitely not part of this application. In that case, what you'll have to do is you just take something, and usually it'll be in this general area, and you'll just kind of push on it and shove it this way, and then that'll open it and eject everything for you. Um, for the rest of them that have this sort of piece, all you're going to really have to do is just push it. As you can see, that lifted up the laser assembly and started to eject this. Now, once you see that the tray has started to eject, you can pull it out the rest of the way. Um, on this part, there's an, uh, here's another difference. I think there's only two ways this can work, but again, if you see something different, uh, leave me a comment and I'll uh, get back to you uh, as quick as I can to get a solution. On um, some of them, there are two little, uh, I guess you can say tabs that will be in this area. And what you would do with that is you would pull the tabs up as you are pushing this out. And then that will release the drive. Now on this one, there's actually two little pieces of pla thin plastic on each side. And they, uh, those are actually the tabs that hold it once it goes to its full ejective point. So all you have to do there is you push both of the tabs towards the outside. And as you do that, push the tray out the rest of the way. And that's all you got to do to get it out. I'm going to set that aside now. Now you can see we've exposed the gears and the belt area um, and, you know, the motor part of them. Uh, this is relatively the same in all of them. It may look slightly different, but it all is the exact same concept. Um, all you're going to do here is remove the old one. Now, for this purpose, I've already got a rubber band on it because this is like take number three of this video. <laughs> uh, but don't be afraid when you pull this off and you realize that it's way, way bigger than the rubber band you're about to pull in here. Those uh, are actually belts, and they don't really have much elasticity to them, whereas these are rubber bands, and they stretch and pull all over the place. So that's why you need one that's going to be a lot smaller. Now simply just take the rubber band and just get it back on there. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally put it below. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier than you think 
you want to make sure you get it into the tracks. Now see right here, uh, I did do that. This one fell below. And you always want to make sure you've got it in the tracks. Uh, I don't really think those are called gears. I'm not sure of a, uh, a politically correct term to call those, but uh, you want to get them in those tracks. Otherwise, you'll have to take everything apart and start all over. And that's pretty much it. Um, once you've got that in and make sure everything is where it should be, uh, you just need to slide the tray back in. I will show you this part just because you have to be careful and you can't just you cannot just slide it in there. Um, what you need to do is just get it started and get it back to the point where you had to pull the levers uh, to get it out of there. Now the same piece that you used to help eject it, this white piece or uh, you know whatever it may be for your particular version, uh, will have little notches of some kind on top. Uh, hopefully you can see that. That's the notch we're going to be worried about. This one doesn't really matter, but this is the one. And the point of this is, let me pull this back out. On the bottom of this, there's a track, if you can see it. And that notch has to be fed into this track, otherwise it will never eject and never work correctly. So, well, all you have to do, as you can see, this will move a little bit. So as you're putting it back up, look and make sure you get to the point where that track is about right next to the notch. Just get that notch to go inside the track and then feed it in there. And now you're good to go. All you have to do after that is put the outer shell and outer casing back on and put everything back in the Xbox and you'll be ready to start playing some games again. Um, I hope I went through most of the things that are different between the drives, but again, if you if you see something that you're not understanding because you have a different version or really any reason, leave a comment and I'm really good about getting back with you definitely within the same day. Um, thanks for watching and I hope this was simple enough. Uh, make sure to subscribe. I have a lot of other tutorials, uh, uh, console case modding, a lot of other fun stuff that I like to do. Um, and, you know, if you ever have any questions about anything else or even a request for a problem you're having, I'll definitely consider making a tutorial for that. Anyway, thank you. And again, or until next time, I should say. <laughs>